Hi everyone, we're Chris and Wendy from Meeple Overboard, and today we're going to be playing Roar and Write, an Animal Kingdom's game. This game is by Carla Kopp and Galactic Raptor Games. So today we're going to be doing a playthrough video that you can also play along with us. So go ahead and look in the uh, look in the description of the YouTube video to go ahead and get a play along sheet that you can print out in black and white, or an Excel sheet that you can play along if you are a nerd accountant like me. Oh no, Chris. What if there are too many people trying to play at the same time? Well, don't you worry. This covers people who are 1 through 100 years old. That's a joke. Ha ha ha. 1 to 100 players. That's intense. 15 minutes and ages 8 plus. I think we fit in that age range. I think we do. Yes. So up to 100 players, meaning you and as many people as you want can just play along with this video. We'll describe how everything goes and uh, we'll let you play along with us. All right. So let's go ahead and learn some of these rules. All right, so this is a roll and write game. There are dice that you roll and then you write numbers into your player sheet. The main area, the main thing that you're trying to do is trying to appease the council of animals. So you'll be rolling six dice and you can roll up to or write up to six of those numbers into your council offering area each roll. There are five rounds to the game and each round has three rolls to it. And you can reroll all of the dice, no matter how many numbers you've written down. So if you're familiar with Yahtzee style games, this is going to be fairly familiar, but with some cool variations on scoring. So you're going to roll the six dice, and then you can write up to six of those numbers into your council offering area, this, uh, this little grid down here. And let's say that I wanted to, for example, put um, five and five, two and two. Maybe I'm trying to make pairs or make three of a kinds or something like that. I can write down five and five, two and two, and that will be my first, uh, the first writing that I'm doing here in the council area. If I have unused dice on a roll, say there's one in the six, I can choose to put one of these numbers into this top little pentagon area that represents the kingdoms. I, you know, so this is appeasing to these scoring cards, and these are other scoring objectives. So I could write a one or a six somewhere over here, like this area where I'm trying to write multiple of the same number. I put a one here. I'm hoping over the next several rolls to add more ones. Let's say then on my second roll, we go ahead and hey, look at this. I have say, let's pre just pretend another five, another two. If I was trying to make two sets of three, for example, I could write in another five and another two. And then I would have be, I would be done. I would have completed my whole offering. So then this column over here allows you to score some bonus points if you complete all six of your numbers that you're going for on your first roll for four points or your second roll for two points or if it takes you until your third roll you earn zero points zero bonus points but you'll still get to score an animal so let's say that i have five 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 two 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 uh at the end of the third roll oh i'm sorry really uh, let me finish up so i use the five and the two this round and I can then add another one of these numbers over here to the top kingdom area. If I started one here, maybe I'd write another one up in my area where I'm trying to get three of the same number for four bonus points. So that'll be my next roll. And I'm done with an offering, so I would just go ahead and write in. I would just kind of say circle this two, and I'll score two bonus points. And even though there are three rolls to the game, even though my thing is completely done, there are three rolls to the to each round. So we would roll the dice again, because even though I can't add anything more to my council area, all six spaces are filled in, I still get to add one number to my kingdoms area. And so maybe I'd put this last one up here and score this all uh, and, and have this thing completed. That would be a fantastic scenario. Now, all of this is happening simultaneous. I'm choosing dice. Wendy might be choosing different dice to fill up her council offering area and different numbers to fill in her uh, her kingdom as well. And you might be doing something completely different than me. But at the end of that round, we're going to choose then a representative. If one of these representatives said, have two different sets of three, I would choose representative, you know, whatever the letter is and write it here, score those points and add whatever bonus points, four, two, or zero, and that'd be my total for the round. And you do this five times, five rounds with three different numbers to them. I think the last thing that I want to add really quick is that it is possible to add multiple numbers up here. So let's say I want to add a six, a five, a four, and a three to this area where you want to have the biggest numbers and you want to fill in all six spaces down to the smallest, 
I would be able to add, uh, add a more than one of these at a time, but to do so, I will have to X out and actually cross off these boxes, thereby making my, my total possible council offering smaller. You know, uh, crossing one out means that that space is used. I can't add a number there, but I could add in the six for free because you're always allowed to add one per roll up here as long as it's not a number that you're using in your council. Then, if I want to put a five, I have to cross out this box. If I want to put the four, I have to also cross out another box this round. Do the three, cross out another box. So I could only have three numbers in my offering. And then I would be able to put six, five, four, three out here and be super close to earning these nine points. So that is the general flow of how you're going to be filling up this sheet here. Wendy, do you want to talk about the personal agenda cards or maybe any other things that I might have uh, uh, overlooked? Sure. So our personal agendas um, include two different things on them. So you gain points for each of a certain number. Mine happens to be a number five in my council offerings. So every number five that is over here in my boxes counts towards the collection of fives that I have. If I get more than nine, that's seven points. That's great. The other thing that you count together is pairs. So my pairs are one and three. So every one and three that is a pair in my council offerings, they don't have to be next to each other. They just have to be for every set of one and three I have in there. Um, I get points for pairs as well. Um, Chris's numbers are three and two and six. And the, pair, uh, the personal agenda that you, if you were playing at home with us, will be following will be for every single one in your council area. You count up and see which range you get into and for pairs of fives and sixes. So if you can get lots of these, you'll also earn bonus points here at the end where you see that there are personal agenda uh, points to earn. And also representative letters. You wanna go over that? Sure, the representatives. These are our representatives up here and they all have a letter A, B, F, H, K. And they all have a special um, Thing that you're trading your dice for basically your, your offerings and so let's say we do round one and round one i'm working towards this this has a set of four dice of the same value four twos count as one four of a kind if i get four of the same dice in this in this uh, age one offering then i can trade in that one set for eight points and i'd write over here my representative letter that would be A, and then I write over my eight points. And then at the end of the game, I would look at my representative letters and see how many I have. If I have, if I've been doing only one, if I've been doing A's the entire time, then I would get one point. If I mix it up and I do H and B, maybe, then I would get three points. And if I do a different one every single round, I can get up to 15 points. Mm -hmm. Lastly, you'll score up your kingdom. So everything that you've filled in here, three of the same number. Two pairs, five, five, two, two, for example. Small to big, there's five spaces, so you can have one, two, three, five, six to complete this, for example. Big to small, you have to go from six down to one because there are six spaces here. And this last one, you can earn eight points if you fill in any numbers, and they can repeat because there are seven spaces here that you'll have to fill in. So four, five, six, nine, and eight additional points that you can get, and you can score multiple of these and then you total it up. All right, so let's go ahead and explain these council people. So A is, once again, a set of four gives you eight points. This B is called different. We did have to fix that. This is a prototype, um, <laughs> yeah, early prototype copy. So each set of different council offerings. So if I have one unique die, one, two unique, one, three unique, three, and so on up to 15. Uh, over here, F, odd pairs. So specifically, you want to have pairs of odd numbers, one, one, three, three, five, five, or something like that. So depending on the number of odd pairs that you have, you can score two, six, or 10 points. Over here, dice that add up to four. This one is it for every number four that you have in your council area, that counts as one of these fours that you're chasing. But if you have three fours, and then say a two and a two, the two and the two add up to another four. So they would technically have four things that add up to a total of four. So you would earn eight points or a one and a three or nothing but fours would get you up to 18. There's and a... the last one for letter K says only ones count for every number one. That's one pip dice. You have up to all six of them can give you up to 18 points. Yep. So I think that covers all of these. Remember, you can use 
Uh, it doesn't, like, the nothing in here is blocked. If I use a number die to write up here, nobody else is precluded from doing that. If I want to use uh, the letter K for scoring this round, everybody can go ahead and do that if the dice just work that way. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a neat kind of straightforward rule set, and hopefully that explains everything so that you can play along with us right now. All right, so let's go ahead and roll for our very first round of Age One. Oh, the first the first thing we have to do is introduce oh, our yes. kingdoms. I uh, my name is Tiger. And my title is King. And my name is Cheese, and my title is Wiz. Heard. So I'm the Cheese Wiz. Heard. All right, so let's see who's best here: the Cheese Wizards, or the Tiger Kings, or our friends at home. All right, let's give it a roll. So remember, this is Age One. You can fill in as many of these dice in your row as you want to to work towards these offerings, and then you can place one in your kingdom. So I'm going to put in two fours and maybe try and get a lot more fours uh, over here. And just to be different, though we did find that we tend to pick this first same couple ones, um, I'm going to go ahead and do one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to place... A one, no, I already used the one. So I have an extra four and an extra two left over. I'm going to put a two over here in the pairs. Okay. Whereas I used four, four, and so I therefore cannot use any fours over here. So I'm going to go ahead and add the one over to my kingdom. If you are playing along and if we are moving along too quickly, feel free to just pause the video as you fill in your stuff and then keep going. All right, so second round of age one. I will roll again for that. Oops, and I will explode the dice Perfect. for that. Go ahead and roll that. That is a four. Okay. Good for me. Ooh. Not good for me. These are exact same numbers as we had before. I know, one through four was should have been good diversity, but. <laughs> it should have. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and take a two up here. That's what I'll do as well. I'll write a two in my um, small to big section. And we'll see what happens with the last roll. All right, we're ready for the last roll. Okay. And you'll notice that Wendy added no numbers to her council offering for this roll. That's totally fine. Yep. Hey. Hmm. So I will get a six. And if you look, there are a whole bunch of ones left. So I'm going to take in my kingdom a number one. And then I will take in my kingdom um, again with an X and I will take another number one. Actually, I probably should put it over here and maybe done a number two, but we're doing what we're doing. Interesting. See, what I'm going to do is, yeah, because there's multiple ones, I'm going to cross, uh, I'm not going to add, or yeah, I already added a four for this roll and there's not a sixth four. So I'm going to cross out one so I can add two ones to this same number area, or, or maybe the two pairs. Two pairs is a good return. So one and one. Alrighty, so that is the end of age one, all three rolls. Now we didn't finish our offerings until the third, so we get zero additional early appeasement points. Maybe you filled in all six values right away and you got four or you got two or whatever it was. So now we're each going to choose which representative from the Animal Council we're going to try to appease. So I am choosing B. And I'm choosing H, no surprise. I have five different ones, so I will go ahead and get 10 points for that. Plus my zero or initially, so I have a total of 10. And my ongoing total is therefore 10. Cool. And my, I have five fours, so therefore I fall into the 12 point category. I get 12 from that. Zero appeasement, so I'm sitting at 12 for my total, and my running total will be at 12, obviously. So congratulations, we finished the first round so far. If you're hanging in there, then you're doing great. All right. Don't forget also your personal objectives. You at home are trying to get as many ones and as many pairs of fives and sixes as possible. You'll see that I have no threes and no twos and sixes, even though my score is doing good, so we'll see what happens. Chris, we'll go ahead and roll for age two. Woo! This is the age of Chris. I think we like the ones. I think we like the ones as well. I like that there's no competition per se. If I see a good roll and I say, hey, I'm going to go for ones, if Wendy does also, it's not, you know what I mean, there's no skin off my nose. 
So I'm going to take the number three and add it to my small to big kingdom. I'm up taking here. the number six and going from big to small. Ah, also very smart. All right, so if we're locked in, um, I'm going to go ahead and roll the second roll. And a lot more ones. Oh no! <laughs> no more ones. None of it. Having none of now, it. Now, at this point, because we haven't chosen who we're working for, we could move on to sets of odds, and I could choose two twos to hopefully get another... Well, twos are not odds, so... Oh, you're right. Three two threes. threes. That's what I meant. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, so maybe you could, you know, sh shift gears because three ones is only four points. You know, and that's not a ton. I'm going to stick on ones and what you, know, you do I'm is gonna, up to you. I'm going to shift gears just so we can do different things. All right. So I'm going to stick with ones. So I'm going to add none of these. But I will add a... Mm, this is tough. I'm going to go ahead and add a five over to the small to big. Skipping a number, but there's one last space. So I now have to add a six over there. So. And I'm adding a five to my big to small. So see, that's nicer. That's, that's pretty good. So, if y'all have chosen, last roll of the round. Come on, ones. Oh, baby. Oh, wish I had stuck with those ones. That's okay. I have three sets of pairs. So, I will go ahead and do that. And... Oh, so yeah, that's, I mean, that's almost as good. I have five one. Okay, so anyway, uh, let me finish my... I'm going to add a here. two here. Just like that. There's no six. See what I'm going to do? Because I can't fill in this last space with a useful one... I could either try to put in a three, <laughs> or I could put in a two or a six, uh, or I could work towards these kingdoms. And I'm gonna I'm gonna x this out again, so that I can add uh, three three up here to get more pairs. All right, so I get the zero bonus down here. Same. I'm a um, appeasing letter F, and therefore I'm getting ten points because I have three pairs. And my total is 10, and my ongoing total is 20. So similar to as last time, I got 12 points for having five ones. So I get 12 for the current round total, because I got no bonus points, early appeasement. Uh, and then my ongoing total will be 24 points. So Chris's ongoing total may be a little higher than mine, but I have a lot more ones and threes going on. Oh, for your personal scoring objective yep. or whatever? Yeah, I mean, these are typically secret, uh, if I remember correctly. <laughs> so, I mean, it shouldn't be known that I'm doing awful at this. But <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm doing good up here in my kingdom. So, uh, it's the start of round three, my dear. All you right. get to... I am the, the roller of the dice. And of course, this game would be going quicker if we weren't narrating everything, you know, to try and help, <laughs> uh, help people who are playing along, which is fine. Which is totally fine. So I think now I'm going to go for the different path, maybe. One, two, three. Mm. Oh, the only thing holding me back is I would like to use the six to score the small to big, but another six will come up. I can I can take advantage of this roll right now. I'm going to go ahead and do two ones again. We shall see. It gives me a few different options. I could work towards a set of four. I could work towards um, this over here. Or if I absolutely have to, I can do odd pairs again. Well, that's true, yeah. So remember that you can always repeat the same counselor. You just get less diversity for this, mm -hmm. uh, for appeas appeasing all the different counselors. So I did one, two, three, four, six, which means I have a one left, which I don't want to throw in the big to small. <laughs> I could put in the any value. That would be worth a lot of points. I'm going to go ahead and try that. The same number is not bad, but eight points is eight points. Okay, so that should be the first roll. All right, that was first roll of the round. Give me a five. No, 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 five. I got another one. If I had a five, I could have gotten We're two close. early appeasement points. Oh, and also no six, so that's no good. Uh. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a three in here. I really want these nine points. It's looking pretty good. I doubt that I will get... All of the ones that I need. The question is, is do I gamble now to try to put in a two there? All right. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and throw in a, a four over here for different numbers' for sake. <sighs> All right. Ready for the last roll? I am. Let's see what happens. Woo! Let's re roll that. Okay. Woo, Three I got ones. My five. I am so glad I got all six ones. That is amazing. I got my five. 
So I'm appeasing K over there, and I got 18 points. Dang, that's awesome sauce. Okay, I cannot... Okay, so I put my five in, obviously, so I'm going to choose any other number, and I'm just going to go to the any value space. And for funzos, I'm just going to put a four in there. Why not? So, okay. So that's it. That was all three rolls. Mm -hmm. So once again, I did not get an early appeasement bonus. We got zero for that because it took all the rolls. But I am appeasing uh, Representative B over there, the Okapi, which is the uh, which is the mascot for Weird Giraffe Games, uh, which is Carla Copps, the designer of this game, her publishing company. So I think that's why they threw the Okapi in there for sure. Uh, okay, so I'm just going B. I get 15 points. So no extra bonuses this round. 15, so I'm going to score... Th uh, my total running total is 39. One point ahead of me. Ooh, you're closing the gap. That I am. So let's go ahead and start round four. Oh, it's you, actually. Yeah. It doesn't matter who rolls. Oh, look at all those fours. Well, I'm just going to take four fours. One... Two, three, four. Uh, and if yeah. I could make this happen, which would be awesome, but I could also make this happen, which would also be awesome. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm definitely going to do those fours. I'm not su suggesting that that's the optimal move, but it's, it's good for me. <laughs> now I have a six and a two that I can spend. I'm going to go ahead. These are supposed to be pairs over here, but I'm going to put another two over there. Just because. So I'm going to put my... Uh, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I was thinking about putting the six here, but I'm going to start my big to small because I bet that I could get that done. So I'm going to put six over here. Uh, you know what? I'm really pushing my luck. If I think I can get this done and maybe this one and another six over here. Uh, let's see if I can do it. I might have to cross off a lot of boxes. But... You know what? I've got four fours. I could just be happy doing this one, and then I could cross off more boxes that become relevant. So, anyway, me thinking out loud. That's the end of the first roll. Second roll, this age. Oh, look at all those sixes. <laughs> oh, look at all those fours. Ooh, somebody's going to be happy if they're going for Wolfie right now. Yep. That I am. Ooh. Two fours. Now I completed in the second round, so I get an extra two point bonus. And I can play something else out. I have a one and what is it? One, five, six. I'm going to go ahead and throw this in, hmm, in here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be content. I'm going to be going for this one, four of a kind, because it'll give me some more end game points. I'm and sorry. Stuff. I'm crossing that out. I needed a one over here. Silly me. So I cross this a lot out. Of ones, apparently. Cross this out. So by doing that, I have filled my uh, uh, my offering. So I get to circle the two because I completed this round as well. Mm -hmm. But I'm you. I'm I'm not putting them in here. I'm going to add one for free, which will be a six. And then I crossed off two boxes, so I can add a five and a four. Nice. Ooh, man, that's going to be. Let's see if that's good or not. So even though Wendy and I are both done, there's also always the possibility that you're done. But even if everyone was finished here, you still do the third roll because even if you're done with your offerings, you still can add a number, if you'd like, to your kingdom. So I'm going to go ahead and put a three. I'm also taking a three. In my big to small kingdom. Woohoo! All right. Ready for round five? Uh, oh, wait. No, we have to finish up. Yeah. So I'm going to appease council member A, the red panda. I'm doing H, and I'm getting 18 more points. Ouch. I'm only getting eight points this round, but hopefully it's that hopefully this strategy is really going to pay off big with this. Uh, so eight, so adding to my running total, I have 47 points. Um, don't forget your two. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. This is the first time I've got this. So I have 10 points for the round. Meaning I have 39 points 49 ongoing, to my 58. And I have almost nothing for my personal agenda, so. <laughs> See how it goes. Round five. This is it. Oh, it's, yep, it's me. All right. Give me those threes, please. 
Um, now, what am I missing when I go through? There's five objectives. I think I'm missing the four of a kind. I'm missing letter A. I haven't done the odd pairs. So three is perfect because it's an odd and it's a pair and it's part of my secret objective. My secret objective! <laughs> Nobody knows. We're, we're playing hands up. It's okay. I'm putting a two here. Yeah, I am putting a two in my big to Those small. threes are perfect because I have a lot of ones and I need a lot more threes. So. So let me think here. There's two more rolls. So I need a one, and then I need uh, four more of any value over here, and I'll have a big end of game payout. And I, yeah, so there's enough rounds that I can try and get more numbers. Okay, yep, let's see what happens here. All right, ready? Yes, ma'am. No threes for me. So, oh, and no. Not, there's only one odd. No one for me either. I'm going to take a four up here. I'm going to put a five over here. I'm going to actually cross one out and I'm going to put a five here as well. Because I'm hope just getting that done. Ooh, this is tense. I'm taking the five into my offering. And then I'm going to go ahead and put uh, any value over here. So let me just put a, let me just put another four for funzos here. So we have one more roll and I, Need to add four numbers over here, so I'm probably crossing out a lot of boxes. I really hope there's a one. Oh my goodness, I really hope there's a one. Give me a three. <gasps> oh no! No threes! Oh no, we're both hurt. We're bo I'm, I'm nine points out because we didn't roll a one this last round. Woo oh no. But fives are good for me. Two fives are two points. So I'm going to go ahead and go for an F again. I'm going to do five and five. There's nothing else I can complete up here, but I technically have another X I can use, or I can just throw another number in there. I just need a threes and ones, so I can do either. I'm just going to exit out, and I'm going to put a six over here for no reason at all. I am. I threw a four up here. So I, I took a five and put it in here, and so I'm going to put a four up here and then cross these out. So I'm going to use the other five and a two just to showcase how this is totally any value or whatever. So, ouch. Let's go ahead and score this up and see what happens. Now I went ahead and appeased. Um, no early appeasement. I appeased F. I have two odds, so therefore I get six points. So six plus 58 is 60. What is that? 60... Well, I'm sorry, what was it? What is 6 plus 58? Oh, uh, 64. Thank you. I was yeah. like, I can try to do this mental math, or I can just have Chris do it. It's always on camera when your brain freezes up. Exactly. All right, so I appeased number, uh, letter F as well. Oh, you doubled up on F, huh? I did. You weren't going for A, because you're going to get more points from doing odds. Okay, so uh, I appeased F as well. I have two pairs. I have threes and fives, therefore I get six points this round. No appeasement bonus. So six as well, yes. So I go from 49 to 55. That's a big deficit that I have to cover up here. And I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, if I had you, gotten this nine. Oh, you didn't get the nine. I, I didn't. you had gotten it. This was, was my big plan to cover up some ground. Yeah, I was hoping that would make you win. Okay, so our ongoing total comes right down here. So mine is 64. Mine is 55. Personal Un agenda. Unique pairs. I had two, so I get two points from the fives. Wait, what? Unique pairs? Or unique, sorry, personal agendas, unique numbers. Oh, okay, this is, yeah. yeah I'm saying unique. weird things. Unique and pairs is what I'm saying. So I had two fives, so that's two points. And then I had one, two, three, four, five threes, and way more than that ones. So I'm going to get the seven points for oh. pairs. Oh, no, that's not what I want to hear. So that's nine. We'll add that in. My representative letters, I only got four different unique ones, so I get ten points for that. And my kingdom total is... 9 plus 6, which is 15, plus 5, which is 20. I will add that up while Chris does his thing. Oh, no. I only had three threes, which is what I needed. I had one two and one six total. So my pairs are one point. So I got, I got three points there. I did appease all five of the council members, so I got 15 points of that. In kingdoms, I have five plus six. That's 11 plus eight. I have 19 that is not going to be enough, I don't think, to close in that very big gap that you're setting up for me. So, um, 
easiest way to math this out. 55 plus 15 is 70. 70 plus 19 is uh, 89 plus 3 is 92. 92. So had I even gotten this 9, it wouldn't have been enough. I would still be two points behind you because I didn't do enough of like pairs and or like, or yeah, like my special pairs and my special numbers. So that was a, a risky strategy that I took and it didn't quite pay off, but it was a lot of fun. So remember at home, make sure to go ahead and count up all of your, your ones and your pairs of fives and sixes in your council area and then go ahead and score up everything else. If you beat Wendy's score, that's very impressive. That's very impressive. <laughs> that's one of three, that's, that's pretty good. The, the rule book, if you're playing a solo game, you can kind of rate yourself on how your solo scores were. So anything over 95 points is a monarch level score. Ooh, I'm no longer the cheese wizard, I'm the cheese king. I, 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 I will shamefully cross king off of my sheet here. <laughs> Means I tell a lot of punny jokes. All right, so that is the play along. That is the play through play along of Animal Kingdom, or sorry, of Roar and Write, an Animal Kingdom's game by Galactic Raptor Games. We're Meeple Overboard. Thanks for playing with us. Bop, bop.